It's time for the Rose Chat Podcast, a podcast dedicated to celebrating the world's most beloved flower, the rose. Join award-winning gardeners Chris Van Cleef and Teresa Byington as they chat with rose lovers and experts from around the globe. With each episode, you'll gain valuable knowledge and insights to achieve the rose garden you've always dreamed of. Listen now as we explore the world of roses. Hey friends, today on this special podcast, we pay tribute to our friend, Annie Haven. Annie was with us from the start of the podcast, even in the dream stages of Rose Chat. She thought we could do anything, and her encouragement and support never wavered. Our garden community is rich with wonderful people, but Annie really stood above. Through the years, I've watched her reach out and offer that same friendship, encouragement, and support to so many others. Now, our last chat was in mid-December. We talked of drought, cows, gardening, the usual. But we also talked about getting together on an upcoming trip I have to California. It would have been our first in-person visit. That's hard to believe after all these years of friendship. The upside of social media is when it breaks down the distance between us and allows for these long-distance friendships. Annie had so many of those friendships. Facebook has simply been buzzing with hundreds of heartfelt tributes to our Annie. Joining us today are others in the garden community telling us a bit about their friend, Annie. Annie Haven and I met originally on Twitter, way back at the beginning of my writing career. She offered to send me a pack of her Mupu tea to try, and I did. And that was our first contact. I'm Shauna Coronado, and I am lucky to have known Annie Haven. She was an angel on earth, and I'll really miss her. From the moment we connected, Annie did something that no one else on social media did at the time. She shared and reshared and commented and shared and gave so much love to me. I felt as if I was her personal project and she was trying to make my business successful. Soon, I found out that it wasn't about business at all. This kindness, this resharing and love that she had in her heart was something she gifted to every person she knew. Annie self-described herself as one tough broad, and I have to agree, she was a character. I once drank moonshine with her, and that lady knew how to laugh hard, tell dirty jokes, and work a ranch. When I went out to California to meet her cows at the ranch, Annie told me a secret, that she named every cow at birth with the first name Ives after her father's middle name. I named one of her calves eight years ago, Ives Got a Garden. So cute, right? And he was the cutest little calf ever. If you're wondering what the best way is to remember Annie, my suggestion is to live your life giving to other people. Be kind, be generous, tell people you love them, offer friendship first, expect absolutely nothing in return. That's the way Annie lived and the legacy she would want you all to share. Annie, you will be missed. Annie and I met through our love of organic growing and our network of gardeners, but our friendship really blossomed with our shared love of animals. And we all know about her generosity in promoting our garden books, articles, and products, but she's incredibly generous with her time and knowledge outside the garden, too. When we took the leap and began looking for a horse for our equestrian daughter, Annie offered advice and encouragement. We're not that family who could spend six figures on a made horse, and we knew there would be challenges along the way. Boy, were there challenges. But Annie always said that Toby would help Kristen become an excellent horsewoman because she had to work through his insecurities and teach him to trust her. Annie was right. And as Kristen and Toby grew together, Annie cheered them on along their journey, celebrating their ribbons and sending words of encouragement. Our Animal Crazy family loved seeing photos of her first calves each season, 
and we send virtual pets to Doc. And when we lost our sweet dog, Sophie, in December, Annie was one of the first people to reach out to me. I wish I had told her how much that meant to me and how much I valued her friendship. May we all make the world a little better, a little kinder, in honor of Annie. My name is Jenny Peterson, and like most people, I met Annie years ago on Twitter when Garden Chat was first starting, and a lot of people were there talking about flower and garden shows, and she was one of the people that introduced me to a lot of our other colleagues that I'm very dear friends with to this day. So when I think of Annie, you know, we talk about how gardeners are some of the most generous people in the world, and I think that applies to Annie really more than anybody. Annie had the most generous heart. She was generous with her knowledge, generous with her time, her friendship, um, her advice, her thoughts. Um, any way a person could be generous, Annie was generous and very, very kind. So while we first met and bonded over gardening, over the years I got into urban farming. I live in Austin, Texas, and I have a little one-acre farm in South Austin, and I have I knew nothing <laughs> about urban farming, homesteading, anything. And, of course, as we all know, Annie came from a long line of ranchers, farmers, gardeners. She knows all the things. Never once did I feel she looked down at me, was condescending to me, laughed at how inept I was. <laughs> she could have laughed and I wouldn't have blamed her because I was ridiculous in the first few years with how little I knew about, you know, goats and chickens and what have you. And Annie a couple of times uh, she would see a Facebook post that I had posted about a sick chicken or an injured goat, and she would uh, message me on Facebook, and one time she even called me and she said, hey, I just saw your Facebook post, and I wanted to give you some information about what could be helpful for your chicken or what to do about your goat. And I was just amazed that somebody that has her own business and has had so much on her plate, always seems so calm, so collected, and so present to our friendship and to any tiny little problem that I would be having. For her to pick up the phone and call me and say, hey, here's what you do. Don't worry, it's probably going to be fine. <clears throat> but if not, then here's what you do for your plan B. Never, ever, ever took that for granted with Annie or or forgot that um, she was just such a dear person, really, really dear person. I felt so badly that she had really struggled in recent years. I know a lot of people struggled in recent years, and she was still that same unflappable, kind, sweet, generous person that we all know and love, and I will miss her very, very dearly. Hi, my name is Teresa O'Connor, and I used to write a blog called Seasonal Wisdom. I first met Annie back on Twitter around 2009 when I saw this woman with a big hat sending out bags of manure around the country, and I thought, I just have to meet that woman. And later, I did have a chance to meet with her in person when we both went on a media trip. Um, when P. Allen Smith had his first media trip, we got a chance to spend some time together in Arkansas and also have breakfast together at the airport, and that was really great. Later, when I worked at the University of California, I had a chance to write about Annie's background in agriculture and her family's heritage and how they've helped to introduce uh, particularly tomato crops around the country. They grew like over 80 types of tomatoes. And when I moved over to American Farmland Trust, she was very supportive of me as I was working to protect farmland in California. So I know I speak for many people when I say that Annie was a was a real light in social media and out in the world. And I 
think she would have been very happy in heaven knowing that so many people will miss her, but that we still think about her and that her light lives on. And thank you for letting me share my thoughts. Arlena Schott, and I'm with Garden Wise Living. I first met Annie on Twitter, like a lot of us did many, many years ago. <laughs> um, we became fast friends. A lot. Of, we have a lot in common as far as ranching families, farming families, gardening. Oh, goodness, the soil, the love of the soil, and, of course, y'all. <laughs> gardening has been a life of hers for as long as she can remember, and I loved sharing her sharing her information of her farm family that changed the face of agriculture forever in her area or even ours. When I started talking to Annie Haven, I thought, wow, this woman with her bigger than life hat and her grand voice and her knowledge of agriculture. Um, I want to know this woman. I want to meet this woman um, in person. So I started telling Annie Haven in 2010 um, that I'm going to come and visit. I am going to come and visit. 2010, 11, 12, all through those years. And she'd say, oh, everybody says that. Nobody does. And I said, yes, I am. So 2012 was my first visit to the ranch with Annie Haven. She met me in the driveway, which if you've been to the ranch, is this long driveway with eucalyptus trees up both sides. And I'm from Nevada and now live in Wisconsin. I've been in Wisconsin 20 years. So to see eucalyptus trees on the sides of her driveway was absolutely amazing. She was standing at her gate closed and swung it wide open as if to say, welcome, my friend. I loved our visit. I loved Annie Haven. Her horses, <laughs> her beautiful French, her cattle, her chickens, her roses, and especially her manure tea. I think that's probably what brought me to Annie Haven the first, first time was this manure tea connection that we had together. My grandpa, E.P. Workman, out in Nevada, in the deserts of Nevada, northern Nevada, made manure tea. He'd say, Arlena, in that big barrel over there, go get a scoop of that tea. And I'd get that tea and we'd fertilize and water all of our plants and they did well and that was how I first started learning about manure tea many, many years ago. And so our connection was deep. I knew exactly what manure tea was and I was I was very curious and excited to see her packaging as a tea as a tea bag. Oh my gosh, this woman. I loved her. I will always cherish our visits at the ranch. There was one more past that. We did a TV series, uh, one of my episodes, Garden Wise Living, about her tea. And then on another visit, we went and saw one of her really good friends um, that makes barrel furniture. So I am blessed to have been there several times, and I am blessed to be able to call her my friend. And we will miss her dearly. Thank you for sharing these um, special thoughts and special memories of our dear friend who has the largest of voice, largest hat in the universe that spreads sunshine wherever she goes. And now she's sharing it in the stars, in the trees, in the grass, and in the flowers. We'll love you forever, Annie Haven. Garden on. Sadly, I awoke last Saturday to the news that my dear friend, Annie Haven, had died. I met Annie 15 years ago on Twitter. She was talking up a storm about Mupu tea on Garden Chat. From a mutual love of gardening sprang a friendship and ultimately a business partnership that has endured all those years. Annie descended from one of the pioneer families of California. They grew vegetables for the nation's largest seed companies 
and eventually also had a very large cattle operation. When her brother died and things got tight financially, that classic can-do spirit rose up within Annie and Mupu T was born. Ahead of her time, she knew the power of all natural soil amendments in growing organically, and she preached the undeniable power of Mupu T at every turn. Fiercely loyal to her friends, she stood by me and many others through thick and thin. Our final conversation was just before Christmas, and our final words to each other were, I love you. Never pass up an opportunity to tell those you care about how you feel about them. It may very well be your last opportunity. Rest in peace, sweet Annie. You've been listening to the Rose Chat Podcast with Chris Van Cleve and Teresa Byington, expert rose gardeners who want to help you achieve the rose garden of your dreams. Don't miss an episode. Listen anytime on our website at rosechatpodcast.com or listen on the go via the Rose Chat app on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Share this podcast with your social networks and join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by using the hashtag Rose Chat. Join us next time for another edition of the Rose Chat Podcast. The Rose Chat Podcast is a production of the Rose Chat Media Group, Birmingham, Alabama.